depressed. For a game about conquering mental illness, it sure caused me a lot of mental illness. Watch Mojo called this the fourth hardest game of all time. I disagree. Have you ever played Losing My Virginity? In Getting Over It with Sean White, you play as a 16-bit Canadian on a quest to climb Mother Earth's most poignant nipple and overcome a painful breakup with Izuku Midoriya. It's pretty straightforward. The only cliffhanger in this compressed dick test of a 1 gigabyte file is the noose in my Doki Doki Bedroom Schlatt reaction video. You aren't battling a giant monster with a singular eyeball. You're trying to outrun the voice in your head telling you that you're just not good enough. I'm something of a sad boy myself. Growing up without a father, losing three pets to various illnesses within the span of a year, and dealing with morbid obesity through throughout high school without becoming a terrorist was so challenging, I'm surprised I've yet to be awarded a Nobel Peace Prize for my thankless servitude. But with the help of your Carrot Top Naruto Dash, you'll dodge and weave your way through the psychopathic ass blast platformer and your unresolved trauma like a moth to a goddamn flame, only to learn that it was never about the destination, but the imposters among us along the way. <laughs> Arkham makes you feel like the Dark Knight, Stray makes you feel like a pussy, but Celeste really makes you feel like a ginger with Air Jordans. <laughs> Excluding the 5 million deaths you'll accumulate on your journey, this wholesome bouncer is PETA friendly with extra virgin olive oil. Your only attack is a Goomba stomp, boss fights end with empathetic monologues, and the genetically modified strawberries only have a few preservatives and artificial flavors. Some are easy, some are bastards, some are homophobic and fly away when you get close. Or aren't you glad I didn't say banana? Side note, I've always preferred collectibles like these over stinky dog tags or Riddler trophies because they're quirky and have a cute little jingle that mingles with tingle and a can of Pringles. But seriously, 175 strawberries for a pie? Who are you baking for, Thorin and company? <laughs> Steam kept asking me if I wanted to recommend this game to friends, and I had to decline, because I'm what you would call an empath. The main campaign was completely harmless besides chapter 7, but my little brother was playing that one, so ignore the death count. It's not until you reach the B-sides that you'll want to rip out your insides. Dodge Horror, Cock Lock, Purple Monkey Slots, Wilted Dick Sack. Two hours later. After finally completing them and disabling my neighbor's ears, I learned that the protagonist, like the game's lead designer, is a trans woman, which is beautiful. It's always nice to see representation for the alphabet people. Except this game will have you cutting off your dick and balls for a different reason. Whose idea was the seasides? Shrek in the Backrooms? Chase Obunga? 3AM Scary TikTok Challenge No Face Cam? Isn't it ironic that this game was made by a member of an oppressed minority, and yet is only playable by the privileged majority? I mean seriously, you have to have a strong case of Sigma Balls with a Giga Maiden on the side to enjoy this shit, because if you've experienced even the smallest fraction of pain in your lifetime, you will be reminded of it. Whenever I die, I wouldn't hex the developers or spew racial profanity like your favorite Twitch streamer, no. I'd say, Damn, I'm fucking ugly. And then cry. Are you proud of yourself, Maddie? <laughs> what makes the platforming here so moist like my panties after committing a murder spree are all the goofy little tools my dad used to beat me with. Like these spiky propeller cubes, ooga booga bunga blocks, cheap, 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 cheaps, Minecraft slime, cubes of the astral plane, and of course some beatbox galaxy platforms. All of these work together like an Amazon factory to ship your ass whooping with same day delivery. Except you'll really start to hate the golden feathers and these electro chodes in the later stages for their Star Fox Zero level in precision. Trying to navigate a maze of serrated crystals as a Hadouken piss ball with Holocaust handling is like trying to play Tom Clancy's The Crew with an off-brand Wii Wheel. Something about this game feels very retro, like I've played it before in a dusty arcade. I just can't tell what it is though. But seriously, if this was a quarter guzzling cabinet in the 90s, I'd be suing the fucking venue for child endangerment. There's a New York construction site from the 1920s, a Lovecraftian bootleg hentai dungeon, and what appears to be the Overlook Hotel? The music in this game really makes you feel like a celestial deity who just snorted a bunch of pixie sticks while lucid dreaming atop a merry-go-round. Some songs make you want to solve a mystery, others make you want to have an orgy. One even changed the color of my hair. The only problem is that some of the best music is only found in those evil endgame stages. Kendrick dropped a new record? Shit, I gotta beat a Steel Soul run first. <laughs> Oh.
Unlike those little baby platformers you find at your auntie's yard sale, this game's cast is grounded by reality and are thus prone to human pain. There's an awkward selfie-holic and niche micro-celebrity who's trying to honor his deceased grandfather, a skittish hotel manager whose obsessive compulsive disorder manifests angry chew jelly, and a red-pilled blue chicken that tries to convince you that you're in a video game. This game masterfully constructs a symbiotic relationship between the protagonist and the player, driving you to project your own struggles onto a squishy vessel and then conquer them through her. Despite prior clowning, this game is genuinely helping people by reminding them to break down difficult tasks and breathe when suffering a panic attack, which is fucking awesome. Maddie's team have put together such an exquisite demonstration of platforming brilliance by marrying tight game design with a wholesome story warm enough to melt the snow and flood your village. I wanted to hate this game because it can be so goddamn annoying with the most unforgiving, razor-precise dick cheese jumps on the face of my asshole, but I just keep coming back like an abused puppy with Stockholm Syndrome. Memorable music, charming characters, and a gorgeous retro art style blend together to create a timeless genocide that will have you walking around sad Spider-Man style. I fucking hate this game. 10 out of 10. Hello everybody, Papa Smurf here. Thank you guys for helping me reach 200 subs. Last week, it was the H3 podcast. Next week, it's the Creator Clash. <laughs> but seriously, y'all are fucking awesome. These videos take a long fucking time and uh, spinal scoliosis. So if you enjoyed your trip to the third inverse, please send this to your middle school physics teacher and my parole officer so I can support my 35 children with dubious dishes.